Giselle is a cockroach. And I mean this in the literal sense. Giselle is very hard to kill, and to reflect this, Kubo designed them with this signature roach-like antenna. We see both in the manga and anime that Giselle can take multiple life-ending hits, yet they keep coming back time and time again. I find Giselle to be an interesting character, despite my biases towards what they did to Bambietta. You know, killing her, zombifying her, beating her, ragging her around like she's some used cum rag, and degrading her to be this mindless sex-dependent being. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. But who? Or what is Giselle? It's important to ask this question because so many people on social media interpret them on a surface level, focusing on their status of being a trans character or the fact that they're a necrophile, without really delving any deeper. And I think that's doing the character a massive disservice. Giselle is fascinating because they're a character with multiple layers to them, even darker than the last. So grab some popcorn because we're about to dabble into the controversy that is Giselle, the zombie, Joel. Giselle is a Quincy and part of a group called the Bambies, short for the Bambietta group. The members include Bambietta Bastabine, Candice Catnip, the Toto Lampard, Meninas McAllen, and of course, Giselle Joel. While they are assumed to be a all-girl group, this is just an assumption and not stated outright in the source material. Now, the group doesn't exactly share a friendship in the conventional sense. I'd say the closest members are Latoto, Meninas and Giselle, but even then, they still disrespect each other, call each other names like bitch and slut, and oftentimes tease and demonize each other for their antics with males. Now, this could be attributed to the idea of classic banter, banter. but I think the real reason why they stick together is because they're all new recruits looking to survive in an already creepy and weird group of the Sturmritter. This is kind of suggested by Robert just before he became overcooked pork by the Ashwalan. To survive, they all normally stick together and choose to fight enemies at opportune moments when they're at their weakest. They all have an understanding of each other's powers and they all know how to work as a group to synergize their powers in combat. And they all have their own little magical girl power up. However, with that said, whilst they are a team, they are also hot-headed, emotional, and work on their own self-interests. As shown for when they abandon Bambietta or their own fight against Ichigo, they have no issue breaking up the team at the slightest moment of if they're pissed off or if there's a reward to be had. They are strongest in a group, but as we see, in the end, their individual egos get in the way of their survival. As I mentioned before, Giselle, like a cockroach, is extremely hard to kill. To give a few examples of their insane durability, Giselle has taken countless life-threatening hits, such as having their neck snapped in a bear-like trap by Latoto, snapping their neck back into place after being punched by Ichigo, shot in the stomach by Baz B, stabbed by a zombie Kensei, and off-screened by the Quincy King himself, Yuha Ba. Giselle's primary ability, however, is creating an army of zombies. While Giselle doesn't put themselves on the front line as much, unlike with Ichigo, Giselle focuses on using others to fight for them. This works by using their blood to seep into the body of the enemy. This, of course, varies differently on the opponent. Low-ranking officer? Just splash a bit of blood on their skin. Lieutenant or captain? This blood needs to have a higher dosage and time to work while the enemy is presumably weakened. As explained by Mayuri, for stronger opponents with higher spiritual pressure, Giselle's blood needs to be duplicated by their own circulation throughout their heart to fully impact the brain. Giselle can also control and make an army of Quincy's too, but the condition for that is that the Quincy has to be dead for the ability to take effect. Just like in Bambietta's case, simply splashing blood on her wouldn't really cause an effect, unlike it would with a Soul Reapers. It seems Quincy blood is potentially all the same, so the duplication process through the heart wouldn't change their composition. But of course, more on that later. In regards to Giselle's Volstandig or holy form Dancing Dead Boys Club, while it's an anime original, it seems that they can only summon Reishi-like skeletons that try not only to attack, but when broken up, they latch onto the opponent, with of course the attempt to paralyze the enemy, as Giselle uses munchy munchy babies, to which, with a heavy assumption, is used to bite, thus being able to infect the enemy's blood, perhaps directly. The zombies' weakness, however, is the same as all Quincy powers. Hollows. By using the blood of his Arankars, Mayuri countered Giselle's Quincy blood, breaking the power of the zombie, leaving them with no meat shields, vulnerable, and alone. 
Furthermore, while it's not entirely certain, it would seem that Giselle does in fact need a replenishment of blood. This would make sense as using so much blood to create such armies would have its own drawbacks. And of course, using more blood on more powerful opponents in such a small amount of time, especially if you've taken battle damage, can probably attribute to Giselle's continuous escapes from death. But now we get into a topic that I personally want to ask. What does Giselle want? We have many ideas, give or take with most of the Sturmrutter, but let's focus on the Bambi group for now. Bambietta and Candice are a bit of a mystery, maybe it can be related to cute guys like me, but who knows. But the other three? Well, while it unfortunately wasn't added into the anime, we can really get a glimpse of what they all want within the manga. After Candice talks about a prize for killing Ichigo, the three Sturmritter daydream about their prize or wish. The Toto is very easy, an endless amount of food or snacks. Mininus is more on the side of perhaps luxury, fanciness, or, you know, even the richer side of life. And Giselle? Well, nothing. A blanked out imagination. Now, it could be that this is just a comedic panel, that there's nothing but void going on in Giselle's head, yet he's still salivating at that, showing how completely out of this world he is. But I personally do think Giselle is thinking of something here specifically. You see, Giselle has shown that same drawling expression when he thought he could use his blood to heal Candice. In other words, to zombify her. This, of course, wasn't exactly what Candice wanted. So, with that said, this scene says a lot about what makes Giselle excited. He draws at the idea of using his powers on others because fundamentally he has the desire to control. This blank void is what he craves because that's what he desires the most in others. A void, nothing to it, nothing of a will of its own, just something he can control. A zombie. Furthermore, if you know anything about Giselle and his desires, it gets even more dark. Their blanked out imagination and draw adds together to become something like a sexual innuendo, making their expression seem suggestive in nature. But what is that something? Kubo has been known to censor things from his manga before, whether it was Nemu holding up a penis phone in the Bleach official bootleg, or Mayuri resurrecting Nemu against Xylopro. You know what scene I'm on about. Kubo can be crude and even suggestive, so what is this dark thing that Giselle is thinking of? What could be so bad in Bleach that it has to be potentially censored? My assumption would possibly be sex related, but with who? The answer? One? or all of the Bambis. Now, how did we come to this conclusion? Well, Kubo has only really censored something in regards to an explicit sexual related scene. So sexual with who? Zombies perhaps? If that was the case, it would have been implied by now. Okay, so what about the guy Quincy's? Well, there have been many that have died and none of them were zombified, like Kang Du, Bernice, Jerome, or Roy Lloyd, for example. It seems any of the Bambi girls were the eye of the prize in this instance. So, why Bambietta? I mean, who knows? Me personally? Great choice. Peak choice, in fact. <laughs> yeah, boy. So what was Giselle doing? Well, maybe it's not specifically Bambietta that was the focus here, but she was definitely the only vulnerable opportunity that Giselle was waiting for. And considering that most of the Bambi group seemed to dislike her for her power and instability, it would appear the only logical reason, considering that none of the remaining girls dissuaded Giselle from zombifying her. At the end of the day, Giselle craves control to achieve their desires in a twisted way, and got it with Bambietta. So did Giselle actually achieve their goal? Considering Bambietta got turned into a zombie and had her begging for, well, let's be honest here, there's only two things that Bambietta would want and that's blood or semen. And I'm more so leaning towards the latter. Considering that, I'd say that they got what they wanted. But you may be asking, but how? It's clear to me that Giselle is playing a character to achieve their desire. Now, what do I mean by playing a character? I'm implying that they're pretending to be a female, and here's why. When we see Giselle's interactions, it's always like everything being said is either provoking or outright lying. There's never been a hint of truth to actually leave Giselle's mouth except for when they're alone. Now Giselle never claims to be a female themselves unless it's in the form of defense, such as in the case with Yumichika and Ikaku. But when Giselle gets called out by Yumichika for smelling a semen, you quickly see Giselle's demeanor change very quickly. 
They become very confrontative, as if they were caught in a lie, revealing their true, darker self. Giselle's actions and body language changes to assertive, reckless, and almost egotistical the moment the rug gets pulled from under the act. The way he commands Bambietta, talks to her, and rubs her around like a toy is becoming more befitting of the character, and it's not even outright denied either. Like, why is Giselle smelling like semen? What is Bambietta begging for? Let's uh, just say, for example, do you guys, you know, casually smell of semen? <laughs> Or is that something that usually lingers after you've done the deed? Well, it only makes sense here, right? It's heavily implied that Giselle had his way with Bambietta in some way, shape or form, and hence the post-nut smell. Because, well, how would Bambietta beg for something that they haven't had before? Is it blood? Well, considering that during Bambi's begging scene, Giselle mentions a pre-established reward which certainly doesn't seem to imply blood for healing, so to me it seems like a very simple 1 plus 1 equals 2 situation here. This fundamentally tells us what Giselle's goal is. Giselle always wanted to be predatory towards the Bambi girls, and this lies within the actions and innuendos implied. Giselle doesn't deny these claims from Yumichika. It's received with a smile of, you got me. So, I might as well show my true colours. But, on the other hand, when Charlotte claims that they are the same, Giselle takes offence. Now, Charlotte is a character who, as we see countless times in the story, fails to make their Sailor Moon-like persona match up to their true aggressive nature. So, it's no wonder that Giselle takes offence when their act gets called out by a character on that level. It would seem apparent to me that if the goal was any of the Bambis, the best solution towards that goal would be to infiltrate the group, waiting for the perfect moment to seize that opportunity, and this isn't a new concept in media at all. Let's see white chicks for example. They pretend to be females to get a potential kidnapper. They have to dress like females, act like females, speak like females to get to an endpoint and see if that effort pays off. Giselle is great at deception. They're able to trick their opponents into attacking him and almost perfect at controlling multiple people. Their whole character is built on control controlling others, controlling themselves, and controlling how the world perceives them. In conclusion, as much as I personally joke and meme about Giselle, I find them to be a fascinating character. I may love Bambietta, but truthfully speaking, I can't defend her. She's a bad person fundamentally, like most of the Sturmritter some more than others. But despite all that, many would believe that Giselle is a trans character. Partly the reason this video is made is because I believe not only is this false in my interpretation, but because I believe that there's more to Giselle than just being this character that people see as trans. To me, I see Giselle as a male, cross-dressing to get close to the Bambis. I believe that this is not only due to the reasons discussed, but because despite Kubo, the author himself expressing what and who Giselle is on the account of three times, including a Shonen Jump scan, people don't particularly like this answer. Now on my stance, who are we to tell Kubo what his character is or isn't? But despite all that, looking into Giselle as a character, Giselle never really uses female pronouns either, a statement which is often focused on, using Boku instead of Watashi or Atashi, for example. Now, this isn't a deal breaker as many females can use Boku too when referring to themselves, but that's more so tomboys, etc, etc. Now what about the other Sturmritter? Kubo also answered that many of the Quinces know of this, all but the Bambis which will go to show how good Giselle's deceit is and considering how distant the Sturmritter are, I doubt they even cared. We need to focus on what Giselle calls themselves, and they never outright call themselves a female unless it was a way to manipulate a situation, which we have discussed and has been a mainstay for Giselle's deceptive qualities. In regards to Giselle's abilities, as someone who can add limbs onto people or healing depending on what you want to consider that ability to be, Giselle seems to have the ability to transmutate. So, if Giselle wants to be a guy, then they can be a guy and give themselves a d Or, if they want to be a female, then Giselle could just be a female. They have the ability to remove or add body parts. <laughs> I think it's fun to have these type of headcanons and interpretations because at least it's based on the Bleach universe and not in real life. 
For me, at the end of the day, the gender isn't the point of Giselle's character. The point is that Giselle is a manipulative predator who wants to be seen as a wolf in sheep's clothing to get what they want. Kubo having Giselle use gender as a deception isn't a commentary on gender. It's a commentary on this character's desire for control. Gender is only one tool for Giselle and there are many other tactics for deception, be it verbal, psychological, or of course, the power itself. So I would like to conclude all in all, I think there is nothing wrong in saying that Giselle is a female or not. I think even as a female, this motivation can still succeed in concept. Just because I believe this character is male, doesn't mean you have to. And that's the same with those that feel the same as me. If people want to see Giselle as a female, then let them. Fiction is all about interpretation, but I want people to see beyond this tiring discussion about gender and look at the motivations and purpose of Giselle, because I think that makes him much more of a compelling character. I hope you guys enjoyed that deep dive on Giselle and my thoughts in general. Be respectful as always, and of course, if you liked the content, hit that like and subscribe. But until next time, I'm going to catch you more fuckers later. You guys, of course, have this fine day, been handsome, and as always, people, peace out.